Hey, Mark Warnke, the goat guy. Um, so remember, um, before we get in, I'm gonna talk about uh, this little mini truck. We've had them for two years now. I talked about it in the very beginning and the wisdom that I thought was going to show up. And I wanna give you the report two years since we've owned them and how that's going. But I just wanna remind you that, um, you know, we, we have an expertise in goats and in homesteading, and uh, you can find us on packgoats.com and rippleranchidaho.com, and we do events and have people out, and so look us up and hope you find this helpful. So as far as mini truck goes on the ranch, here was my thought process. Now, I don't have a ton of money, and so I'm always trying to think thrifty and how do I get it done for, you know, small amounts. I think I paid, if I remember right, 26 or 2,800 bucks for this. When I was looking for a ranch vehicle, I was looking at the UTV market and the UTVs to find a reasonable one that wasn't just a piece of garbage, um, I was gonna spend like six to 12 grand. And if I wanted a nice one, it was 20. Um, and I just didn't have that. This particular one, we have two. We have one that's the right-hand steer and, what, and this one's the left-hand steer. Um, I forget the brand of this one. It is, oh, the Cushman. So the Cushman, so you know, was a mini truck made for the American market and they're kind of hard to find. Rather than a three-cylinder, three they have a four-cylinder. And the other cool thing about them, uh, oh, it's locked, is that it's left-hand steer. So. Um, by the way, the whole right-hand steer thing is no big deal. You get really used to it. The biggest problem I have with it is I find myself getting in the wrong side of the truck all the time. That's the big negative. But learning how to you know, shift a manual and be on the other side. The advantages obviously are cost. The other thing is you have a legit car. You have windows that you roll down. You can have a radio. You can have a heater. You have windshield wipers. It's a legit car that if you put that little orange triangle on the back, you can drive down the road too as a ranch vehicle. They're four wheel drive and not just kind of four wheel drive. They will climb a freaking wall. I'm amazed at what these things will do. My other one even has lockers in it, push button lockers. So they're a crazy good four wheel drive and you can lift them and you can put big aggressive tires on them and winches. You can make them super cool. They even come with power dump beds and all kinds of stuff. So they're a great, great homestead vehicle. The advantage too is that it has a legitimate bed. Now we actually bought a junk one for 500 bucks that had a good bed on it and then put this on that bed on this truck and then built this little tool shed because it kind of didn't fit right. And this thing's amazing. Um, we literally have had this thing stacked like three bales higher with, with bales of hay. I mean, monstrous capacity. These things can handle so much weight. I'm, I'm blown away about what their capacity of weight that you can put in the back of these things. And they're great little rigs made by like Subaru and Toyota and all that stuff. So they run forever. They're not hard to work on. They're not hard to get parts for. I, I think the Achilles heel of the system is that they have jinky like all these vacuum tubes on their carburetors and that can create a problem. Um, they can have a problem with being very cold to start, which is actually the vacuum tubes and the carburetor problem. We overcame that by putting block heaters on these. So we plug them in during the winter and they're awesome. So I can't say enough about the quality of choice I made in terms of like cost, my cost outlay and how consistent and reliable they've been. Um, this has been an amazing little rig. Um, it's a little hard to find tires for them, so that's a, a little bit of a pain in the butt with them, but it's not that big of a deal. And, you know, overall, we've spent so much less and gotten so much more. So I'm recommending that you look at one of these rather than a UTV if you're trying to spend money well and want essentially kind of a better vehicle. Um, I would say that if you're a big guy, and I'm not that big, I'm like six foot 190, um, but if you're a really big person, they can be kind of small in the cabs. And so you want to look specifically for the Subaru model. The Subaru model has the largest cabs of them all, but they're great little trick rigs. And, and if you're handy around the mechanic shop, they're going to be easy for you to maintain. 
Um, you just look for them with low miles. I look for them on Facebook Marketplace. And it seems like the going rate when you're getting a good deal is probably between 2,500 and 3,500. And if you're, you're finding an especially nice one that somebody's taking good care of, that has low miles, that has some ads, you can be up in the like the five to seven range and they're pretty tricked out. So I hope you find that helpful. Uh, Mark Warnke, the GOAT guy, look us up. And uh, you know we look forward to being helpful. Take care. Bye.